or praise him. So tonight's topic is called again demonic activity. That is tonight's topic. Demonic activity. Let's open up with the book of First Samuel. Okay. First Samuel chapter three. First Samuel chapter three and verse verse eleven. First Samuel chapter three, verse eleven. Let's start there. First Samuel chapter three verse eleven. Read. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every everyone that heareth it shall tingle. He says, Both the both the which the ears of everyone that heareth of this thing that I'm gonna do in Israel is gonna make their ears to ring. You understand? Read that again. First Samuel chapter three verse eleven. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. Go ahead, come on. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house, which I begin, I will also make an end. I will also make an end. We don't watch this because Eli was not correcting his son. He was letting his sons just run rampant, doing evil. He didn't correct his sons. Read on. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Read verse 13 again. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restored them, and he restrained them not. So Eli wasn't correcting his son. So the Lord is saying, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever, for the iniquity which he knoweth, okay, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not, meaning he did not correct his son. So they were what? They were loose, they were running rampant, doing evil, he didn't do nothing or say nothing about this thing. So the Lord is saying, I'm going to bring evil upon your house. And the evil I'm going to bring bring to your house is going to make your ears to ring. So guess what? Eli, yes, it was talking about the house of Eli, but it all goes into the house of Israel. Okay? It's going into the house of the nation of Israel. Because guess what the Lord, the, guess what we have done? Is that because his sons made themselves vile. You understand? And he restrained them not. So it is today. Because today, if you look at the black man, the black woman, complete out of order. When they are checked, they rebel. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs 23. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse Start of verse 22. Proverbs 23, verse 22. Read that. Proverbs 23, verse 22. Hearken unto thy father that beget thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. You see what he's saying? He says, Hearken unto thy father that beget thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Read. That goes into honor your father and your mother. That, that, that's what this is going into. Read on. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. He said, buy the truth, meaning learn the truth. Learn the instruction from your father and your mother. Sell it not, meaning don't lose this understanding. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Next verse, go ahead. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy with him. You see what it's saying? The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Why? Because they follow instruction. They do as they are instructed to do. So what we are reading in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3, Eli didn't do that. You understand? That's what said the Lord said, I'm going to bring evil upon your house. Okay? Read that again, verse 22. No, no, verse, 20, verse 24 again. Oh, verse 23, verse 22. Verse 24, come on. Is it verse 23, chapter 23, verse 24. Read. The father, the father of the righteous 
shall greatly rejoice. Mm-hmm. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. The work was how do we how do we how do we get the wisdom of the most high? Give it that in Psalms 19, verse 7. Okay, this is how we receive that wisdom. The father of a wise child. Psalms 19, verse 7. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm-hmm. converting the soul. Go ahead. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the same. You see that thing? So what makes us wise is the laws of God. So what makes this son to be wise is because he was taught God's commandments. When he was given instructions according to the scriptures, he applied that which was commanded of him. Go back to where he was at, Proverbs 23, verse 24 again. Proverbs 23, verse 24. Read. Really? The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Read. Really? Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. The father and thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. Why? Because what? They've got a wise son. You understand? So now what I want to show you is that, go back to the book of 1 Samuel now. 1 Samuel. Go back to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 13. 1 Samuel 3, verse 13. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Because, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. So what I want to show you is that, yes, it's going into the son, but guess what? It also goes into the daughters. The sons were... were, were the, the sons were vile because they were sleeping with the women in the congregation. That is what they were doing. It doesn't tell you how old they were. It's not being specific. Watch this. First Samuel chapter 2 now. First Samuel chapter 2 verse, 20, 2 verse 22. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 22. Go ahead. Now Eli was very old and, and heard all that his sons did unto Israel. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You see what he's saying? Is that how they lay with the women is that his sons did unto all Israel. All Israel. How that they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. That's the same thing that is going on today in the Christian church. Where the pastors be sleeping with half the women in the congregation. You understand? So that's what he, that's one of the things that Eli's sons was doing. It's not everything. This is just one of the things I was doing. Read. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. Meaning all Israel knew this thing. Okay, go ahead. Name my sons, for it is not good. For it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. You are making the Lord's people to transgress. So that's what Eli is telling them, right? Go ahead. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Wait. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Because the Lord would put these the Lord would put the sons of Eli to death. Now, this goes, in, this goes into the sons, right? Now, watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Read. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall, lest the land fall to hold her, and the land become full of wickedness. It says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to hold her, and the land become full of wickedness. So how do the women prostitute their daughters? By the way they dress. That's one of the things. That's how they prostitute their daughters, by allowing them to have boyfriends. 
you understand? By allowing them to go to parties and, and, and slumber parties and sleepovers and all of that. They are prostituting their daughters. You understand? Yeah, the sons of Eli, is, I'm just using the sons of Eli as an example. There was a lot of demonic activity that was involved in. Guess what? The girls, the daughters also, they are involved. The same thing that was the men were involved in back then, so it is today. The women as well. The same thing. Today you are seeing the same kind of thing that we are seeing today. Okay? Read that again. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Read. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Come on. Suppose her to be a whore. Read. Lest the land fall to hold it, mm -hmm. and the land become full of wickedness. So the Lord is teaching us that the reason why the land has fallen to hold it, and the land has become full of wickedness, is because of what? Is because of the women. That's what he's saying. Is because of the women. Now watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel 23 now, verse 37. Ezekiel 23, verse 37. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 27. Thus will I make thy lewdness to no, cease no. from thee. Ezekiel 23, verse 37. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 37. Mm -hmm. That they have committed adultery. They have what? And blood that they have committed adultery. They've committed adultery. Go ahead. And blood is in their hands. And blood is in their hands. So they commit adultery and they kill. That's why they have blood in their hands. Go ahead. And with their idols, they've committed adultery. And with their idols, they've committed adultery because they would sacrifice the son that they would get from committing adultery to what? To the idol. Right? And have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire, to devour them. You see what they was doing? They were sacrificing their sons and their daughters. Now jump down to verse 39. Verse 39. Mm -hmm. For when they had slain their children to their idols. When they have what? Then, for when they had slain their children. So they are idols. When they've killed their children to these idols that they worship, go ahead. Then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. You see what he's saying? Is that the same day after they committed the abortion, the adultery, the worshiping of these idols, is that the same day came into my sanctuary. You understand? To defile it. That's what the Lord is saying. So there's a lot of demonic activity that is going on in the nation of Israel. I'm just using this. As, I'm just using these examples right here. You understand? These are just examples I'm using. Now watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Okay? Give me Psalm 73. Start at verse 1. Psalm 73 verse 1. Psalm chapter 73 verse 1. Go ahead. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Even to such as are of a clean heart. Meaning, like, how do we cleanse our mind? Give me that in Psalms 119, verse 9. Hmm. Psalms chapter 119, verse 9. Read. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So that's how we clean our mind. That's how we clean our we clean the our spirit with the word of the most high. Go back to Psalm 73, verse 1 now. Psalm 73, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Such as that are of a clean heart, meaning those that keep the commandments. Read on. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. You see what David is saying? It says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well, had well nigh slipped. He says, I almost fell into mischief. Read on. For I was envious at the foolish. He was envious at the foolish. When I when saw he, hold on. the prosperity. Hold on. He says, for I was envious at the foolish. So he, he says, he had the spirit of envy at the foolish. 
The foolish is those of our people that do not give a damn about the laws of God. You tell them about the scriptures, they don't want to hear nothing. That's the foolish he's talking about. That's our people, our brothers and sisters today in the media, celebrities and so forth. Yeah, go ahead. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When he saw the prosperity of the wicked. So he says he was envious at the foolish when he saw the prosperity of the wicked. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 11. Sirach 9. Sirach, chapter 9, verse 11. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 11. Go ahead. Envy not the glory of a sinner, mm -hmm. for thou knowest not what shall, he, what shall be his end. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, envy not the glory of a sinner. Don't envy the riches of a sinner, meaning those that break God's commandment. Because you see what David said? He says, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So the Lord is saying, don't envy the riches of a sinner. You understand? He says, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. Because his end is surely coming. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Okay, chapter, we're coming back. We're coming back to Psalm 73. Give me Psalms chapter, no, I think I want Psalms 140. No, Psalm 62. Psalm 62 verse 7. Read that. Psalm 62 and verse 7. Psalm chapter 52, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, mm -hmm. but trusted in the abundance of his riches. You see that part right there? And strengthened himself in his wickedness. Okay, hold on. Now there's a disconnect, okay? There's a bit of uh, demonic activity happening on the network. Okay, Jonah, I need you to read verse 7. Psalm 62, verse 7. The book of Psalms chapter 52, verse 7. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength. Go ahead. But trusted in the abundance of his riches. Read. And strengthened himself in his wickedness. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. He didn't make the most that God is sent. The Lord is our strength. You understand? Because he gave us the laws. That's why our name is, our name is called Jacob. You understand? We have power with God and with men on earth and every bit of God's creation because of the commandment that he gave unto us. So here he's saying, Lord, this is the man that made not God his sin, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. Watch this. Go back to Sirach, chapter 9, verse 11 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 11. Envy not the glory of a sinner, mm -hmm. for thou knowest not what shall be his end. You don't know what his end is going to be. But what the Lord is telling you is that do not envy the glory of a sinner. Don't envy the riches of a sinner. Okay? Because guess what? It says he has strengthened himself in his wickedness. Okay? Watch this. Um, keep going. Verse 12. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Wait. Really? But remember, they shall not go unpunished unto their grave. That's their end. That's their end right there. They shall, he says, they shall not go unpunished unto their grave. Guess what? Death by pain. They're going to feel death by pain. So now the Lord is telling you, says, don't delight in the thing that they delight in. Because they delight, what do they delight in? They delight in the riches that they got. They delight in the riches they have. So because of that, they don't give a damn about the most high. They don't care about what this Bible has to say. Now watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 20. Okay, Sirach chapter 20 and verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 and verse 9. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 20 verse 9. Go ahead. There is a sinner that hath good success in evil things. Mm -hmm. And there is a gain that turneth to loss. You see that thing? So this sinner, that's why it says, don't envy the glory of the sinner. Because the same sinner, guess what? They have what? They have good success in evil things. 
And there is a game that tends to prolong because guess what? Their end is going to be death. Everything that they have, they, they're going to lose it. Just as easily as they got it, they're going to lose it just as fast. That's what the Lord is saying. So, so therefore, don't trust in their riches. You understand? Because what? They, they, they have not made the most of God his strength. Their strength. Their riches is their strength. Give me that in Psalms now. Go back to Psalms. Psalms chapter 73. Now. Psalms 73, verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 3. So, brothers and sisters, just, just bear with me. I'm building to something. So, you know, bear with me. Pay attention. Okay, read that. Psalm 73, verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For I was envious at the foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Because guess what? What is the, what is the prosperity of the righteous? Give me that in Joshua, okay? Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This is the prosperity of the righteous right here. Joshua 1, verse 8. Read that. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Read. For then shalt thou make, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You see that thing? So the prosperity of the righteous is what? When they meditate upon the laws of God day and night. You understand? That, that, that's the prosperity of the righteous because we know the more, as long as we apply the laws of God, the more we observe it, the more we keep, we keep making sure that we fight the good fight, guess what? We know we're going to get a reward, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth. We just have to endure until the end. Okay? This is the prosperity of the righteous right here. When we meditate continually on God's law, day and night. Okay? Go back to Psalms. 73, verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish mm -hmm. when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The prosperity of the wicked is what? Is those of our brothers and sisters that are in the world that are cooked and cooked doing well. And they come to the locations on the weekend to floss to their brothers and sisters to prove that they are cooked and cooked made. We've seen it during June, June 16. A lot of our brothers and sisters were coming there with, with um, expensive cars, just making the white man rich, buying Mercedes Benzes and BMWs. You understand? So now, watch this. That's fine. They are not in trouble as other men. They are not in trouble as other men. Who's the other men? Don't talk about us. Because guess what? We have to struggle for everything. Oh my God, we struggle for everything. Every little thing, you know, like it takes forever to get something. You have to save up. You have to be putting this, this money aside. And guess what? Even that money that you save doesn't save long. Something comes up and that money is gone. You see that thing? That's the reality we have to deal with. Subject to payment. Okay? Read that again, verse 5. The Psalms chapter 73, verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men. Go ahead. Neither are they plagued like other men. They are not in trouble as other men. They don't go through the hardship that we go through. And guess what? These, these, these our, our brothers and sisters in the world, you understand, in the media and all of that, guess what? They are also taught to see themselves differently from the rest of us. So when they come to the locations and all of that on the weekend, you understand, during the quote unquote, a demonic uh, season that they are uh, they celebrate your Christmas and New Year's and all of that. They are taught to disassociate with us. So meaning what? They cannot relate with you. That's the mindset. The bourgeoisie. You understand? They may they that's how they, they are groomed to believe that they are not there like the rest of us. Okay, go ahead. 
Neither are they plagued like other men. They are not plagued like other men. The, 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 the afflictions that we go through on a day to day, you can barely buy bread. You can barely have money to catch a cat. You understand? They don't have those type of problems. Right? Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. So you see what David is saying? He says, therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. They are full of pride. You can't tell them nothing. The minute you talk about the Bible, say, mm -mm, me, I got here because of my hard work. The, the Lord had nothing to do with it. That's the mindset they had. You understand? Because of what? Because of the power of their own mind. So they think. So read that verse again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 6. Read. Right? Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Read. Right? Violence covereth them as a garment. So now it says, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Because guess what? They are violent. How are they violent? They are violent in the way in which they misuse our brothers and sisters that are desperate to what? That are desperate to want to want access to that life. They use and abuse our brothers and sisters. The men, they abuse the high school students. You understand? They abuse tertiary students, the women. You understand? The, what is the women do? The women, they abuse these young men, the bent hands and all that. That's what they do. Okay? Because that's violence, what they are doing to their own race. Now watch this. It says, therefore, pride compasses them about. They don't care about the laws of God. Give me that in Sirach chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Pride is hateful before God and men. You see that thing? Pride is hateful before God and men. Really? Right? And by both does one commit iniquity. You see that thing? By both does one commit iniquity. Because pride you are in the when you are when, when you have the spirit of pride, you are in the midst of sin. Because this is the definition of pride. Read verse 12 now. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 12. Read. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. It says when one and depart, when one departs from the most high. How do you depart from the most high? You don't keep his laws. He says, to hell with that Bible. I don't want to do, I don't want to have anything to do with it. But you see, that's the mindset. Or in the world, they say, I don't want to hear that Bible. Where was, the, where, where was God when I was struggling by myself? That's the mindset you that because that's what they are, that's what they have in their mind. Where was God when I was struggling? I mean, here is a new one, God wasn't there. This is all through my hard work. Pride confronted them as a chain. Okay, read that part again. The book of Ecclesiastes, 10, verse 12. Read. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. Read. And his heart is turned away from his maker. His mind, his mind is turned away from his maker. So if his mind is turned away from his maker, his mind is turned towards something. Who's that? Satan, the devil. You understand? Watch this. Give me. Now it's fine. Go back to Sirach and go back to Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 3, verse 6. Verse 6 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Because the garment that they are, they are covered with is the garment of what? This is not the righteous garment. It's the what? It's the garment of evil. They are covered with sin. They are laden with iniquity. You understand? So violence covers them as a garment. Sin, iniquity. Okay, keep going, read on, verse 7. The eyes stand out with fatness. Mm. They have more than heart could wish. He says their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Their eyes stand out, listen, when they look at the stuff they got, they be saying, look, look at the main cars I've got. Look at the houses I've got. You know, they don't even need the houses, the cars they've got, but they have them anyway. You understand? Read. Really? They are corrupt. They are what? And they are corrupt. They are corrupt. 
So the Lord is telling you that these people that have gotten riches, they are not doing, they are not, they don't, they, they're not getting an honest and honest wage. They have to defraud, they have to lie, they have to cheat, they have to backstab, they have to backstab people, they have to kill for it. Guess what? The Lord is saying, these are men, these, these men are corrupt. So that's why it says, don't delight in the thing that they have got their pleasure in. You understand? Don't envy the glory of a sin. The Lord is telling you that they are corrupt, meaning they are they, they, these are men of corrupt mind. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in um, give me that in Timothy. These are men of corrupt mind. They don't care about anything that the Lord, they, they don't, they don't want to get anything that the Lord has to say. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of um, let me see. Mm. Give me first Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six and verse four. First Timothy six verse four. Read that. First book of Timothy chapter six verse four. Mm -hmm. He is proud, knowing nothing. Go ahead. But dot, dotting about questions and strifes of words. Is a doting, meaning what? They they like to debate. They don't want to hear nothing. You see, that says he is proud, meaning what? These are pride men and women, knowing nothing. They don't know nothing, you understand? Because there's no, there's no knowledge that trumps this Bible. It doesn't exist. The Bible is, the, the Bible is undefeated, okay? So now it says he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strife of words, meaning they like to cause strife. Read on. Way off. Cometh envy. Wherefore cometh envy? You see that thing? Wherefore cometh envy? Because of, of all the riches that they've got, when you come with the words of the Most High God, the wisdom that's written in this book, they will have developed the spirit of envy. Go ahead. Strife, railings, evil sufferings, e evil surmising. Okay, evil surmising. They will cause evil. Go ahead. Watch this. Evil surmisings, mm -hmm. perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. You see that thing? It's a perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind. So these are men of corrupt mind because they are, they are perverse. They like to dispute. Their mind is corrupt. Read on. And destitute of the truth. These men, they have no truth and there is no truth in them. Read on. Supposing that gain is godliness from because, such... Because it says they think that gain is godliness. Remember, it says they, were, they have good success in evil things, and that gain turneth to loss. So in their mind, it says, supposing that gain is godliness, meaning the things that they are gaining in the world, is think, okay, that's good. It's because the Lord is the one that's doing it. They all praise it to God. But when you correct them according to the scriptures, they're going to tell you, no, but you see, the God that you are talking about is not the God that I said. The God I said is giving me all of this. But they know the God that they said. And we're going to deal with that. Read on. From such, withdraw thyself. He says, from such men and women, turn yourself away from these men and women. Stay away from them. That's why we cannot put it on the celebrities to wake our people up because many people are following them. To help with that, they are not going to come to the knowledge of the truth. And if they do, it's going to be very few of them. Okay, now let's go back to Psalms. Go back to the book of Psalm 73. The book of Psalms of the 73, verse 8. Wait. They are mm -hmm. and speak wickedly concerning oppression. And they speak loftily. Is that they speak wickedly concerning oppression. Because that's why a lot of the times when you when you meet these bourgeoisie Negroes, they're gonna tell you, me, I'm not oppressed. You're, you're all oppressed, but me, me, I'm not oppressed. Me, I'm good. I am not oppressed. I'm not in slavery. That's what they're going to tell you. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 8. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. So they are at ease. Why? Because they trust in uncertain riches. Okay? They trust in uncertain riches. So what we are reading here is that they are corrupt. So the mind is sick. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. Meaning they are at ease. That's why in verse 5 it says they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they 
played, and they, neither are they played like other men. They don't go through the stuff that we go through. Although as a nation, we are going through those things. But because they've made them comfortable in, in captivity, they've given them the gifts that destroy the mind. That's why they, when you speak about oppression, oppression that we are in slavery, you, they cannot relate with what you're saying. Excuse me. They can't relate. It's a foreign concept to them. That's why you notice what happens is that in these boarding schools and these multiracial schools, it was always looking out for those Israelites that are sharp, they are smart and all of that. He takes those ones. He takes those ones and groom them. They be working for, they will be working in banks. You understand? They be working for these big companies and all of that. They give, they give them big positions. Why? Because they know these are cool. Those are house Negroes. A house Negro is bred, is fed, is created, is manufactured. You understand? In the boarding schools, in these multiracial schools, that's where house Negroes are born. That's where house Negroes are manufactured. You understand? And that's what you see today, these celebrities, because I'm going to deal with that. Okay, watch this. Uh, keep going. Verse 9. Therefore, the book of Psalm chapter 73, verse 9. They set their mouth against the heavens. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? They, they speak, well, no, they speak evil against the most God. He says they set their mouth against the heaven. Read. And they turn, walketh through the earth. You see that they mean they speak evil. They don't, they don't mind their tongue. It says their tongue, they set their tongue, they set their mouth against the heaven. You understand? They speak evil of the Lord. Watch this. Because the Most High, He wonders about this thing. The Most High, He wonders about this. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy 8 verse 11. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping His commandments and His judgments and His statutes which I command thee this day. So now you see what the Lord, the Moses is warning us now in the spirit of Christ. He said, listen, beware. Be very mindful that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments. Because that's how you forget the Lord. When you, this is my, but my children, my children have forsaken me. Give me that in Jeremiah. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 2. I believe it's verse 33. Or verse 32. Jeremiah 2. The book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 2, verse 30, uh, Jeremiah 2, verse 32. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter, chapter 2, verse 32. Can a maid forget her ornament or bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, yet my people have forgotten me days without number. How did we forget the law? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Read. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So when the way to forget the law is when you reject his commandments and you don't want to keep his commandments at all. You don't want to hear what the, the Lord has to say. Because they don't want to hear what the Lord has to say. They what? They open their mouth against the heaven. Okay, go ahead. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. You see what the Lord is saying? Because that's what, what that is what our people are doing. They don't care about the most like God. He's saying, lest when thou hast eaten and art full. You have eaten and now you are full and they have built goodly houses and dwell therein. Isn't this, this does sound familiar? Give me that in the book of Haggai. Give me Haggai real quick. It says, you are dwelling in your sealed houses while my house lies waste. Woo! That's a very deep cut right there. Okay? Give me the book of Haggai. The book of Haggai, chapter 1. We're going to read Haggai chapter 1 and verse. Let's start at verse 3. The book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Read. 
in time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? You see what the Lord is saying? Is it time for you to dwell in your sealed houses while this house lie waste? Which house? The house of this. The house of the most High God lie waste. You're going to be comfortable in your houses while my house lie waste? That is the question now. Watch this. Go back to where it was at. No, no, keep going. Read the next verse. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He says, examine yourself. Check, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Go back to Deuteronomy 8 now. Verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 12. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and has built goodly houses and dwelt therein. Now you are in your sealed houses while the house of the Lord lie waste. Read on. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. So now, guess what? You have, you're getting these riches, right? You have, now your mind is on these riches that you have. Go ahead. Then, Thine heart be lifted up. Then thy what? Then thine heart be lifted up. That's going into your pride because you're going to forsake the Lord now. Because guess what? You're going to trust in the what? You're going to trust in the riches that you've got. That's the same thing we read in Psalm 62 verse 7. You're going to trust in the riches that you have. You understand me? And thou forget the Lord thy God. And you forget the most high. How do we forget the Lord? We just read it in verse 11. You told me 8 verse 11. Go ahead. Which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now, you see, the most High God, you notice the Lord keeps reminding us over and over what he did for us. You don't forget. Because Jeshurun wax fat. That's what you read in Deuteronomy 32 verse 15 now. Wax, wax fat and kicked and forsook the law that, that made him. That's the, that, that, that's the motto of Israel. You understand? When you're struggling, remember the Lord. When everything is good, just forget about the most high. That's how Israel thinks. That's how Israel is. Okay? Watch this. Read that again, verse 14. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 14. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Come on. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness? Mm -hmm. Were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint. Out of the rock of flint. That's what we also read about, uh, about it in Deuteronomy 32. But the Lord is, show, is showing us what He's done for us. So, what is He saying? He's saying that everything that you got is because of me. Don't get it twisted. It's not because of clever you are or you think you're smart. No, no, it's not. You have nothing to do with it. Let me say that again. Everything that you got, you have nothing to do with it. You didn't bring it. The Lord is the one that did. I don't care how many hours you have to sit down to. It don't mean nothing. You have nothing to do with it. The Lord is the one that is making, is making that thing available to you. It's not the white man. The Lord is the one. The little, the, 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 the little crumbs we got is because of the Most High. The Most High is the one that is making the crumbs available to us in the land of our captivity so we can be able to maintain and support ourselves. He's responsible for all this. Okay? You know? Who fed thee in the wilderness with men which thy fathers knew not that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. At thy latter end, meaning when we get the kingdom. You understand? The reason why the Lord is doing this is to humble us. Watch the next verse there. Go ahead. And thou say in thine heart, what did my say? power, and thou say in thine heart. And this is what, because guess what he says? And thou say in thine heart, because our lips, our heart will be lifted up. Like we read in what? Like we read in verse 14 when it says, Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God. That's why you that's what this is what you're gonna say in your mind. Because now 
You have forgotten the law because your heart is lifted up in your pride because pride is compassed your neck up. It's compassed, it's compassed you about the neck. You understand? As a chain. Keep going. Then thou say in thine heart, mm -hmm. my power, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 17, and thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. You see that thing? Read that part again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 17, mm -hmm. and thou say in thine heart, my power and, my, and the might of mine hand had gotten me this wealth. This is because that's what you say. My power, okay, and my might has gotten me this wealth. I work hard. I'm, I'm the one that's working. The Lord is not there when I'm laboring, so on and so forth. That's the mind, that's the mindset of our brothers and sisters out there in the world. You understand? Those that are quote unquote made it. That's what they say. That's what they tell themselves. You understand? They don't give glory and praise to the most high. So now it says, my power and my might, um, the, uh, the, uh, my hand have gotten me this, this wealth. But watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 4. Let me show you who's giving them the power to do all these things. Because um, even in the Christian church, you ever seen the people that go to the Christian church, they be driving Bentley, Range Rovers and all of that. Because we used to go to churches like those and we would see them. The pastor be shiny while the congreg while, while the, the members within the congregation they don't know what they're gonna eat tomorrow. Oh my god, I've been there. And I ever I always used to ask myself, what the hell am I doing wrong here? Because I come, I come to I go to church, they be clapping, I be clapping too. So but clearly I'm doing something wrong, something special. I'm not doing. okay. No, I'm telling I'm, I'm serious. And and what they'll do is they'll have a special room. I remember there was a church, there's this church I went to. And as before the, the church service started, guess what? Jezebel was leading the church. And so what would happen was that Jezebel would be leading people to another room. There was a school they used to go, we used to go to a school. And Jezebel will lead them to another place. And he be she be teaching them how to speak in tongues. Okay. They be saying all these shabara shabara. Hey, what, what, what this? Like, I'm like, okay, me, I can't, I don't even understand what the hell they're saying, but me, I cannot see, I can't seem to catch that Holy Ghost. But everyone was catching it. People were jumping up and down, like, what the hell is going on here? And guess what? Here I'm struggling, I don't even have money to go back at that point. But people be telling you, coming with testimonies. You know, I used to struggle. Now I gave my life to Jesus, I meaning white Jesus, white baby Jesus, because in the pictures that they drew, white baby Jesus is always a baby. He never grows up. Okay? But yet they have one on the cross that is a grown man. You can't make this stuff up. So they be giving their personal testimonies, which is completely 100% wrong. You understand? And the thing they would say is, now I have a Range Rover. I own a Range Rover now. I'm a manager at such and such company. You understand that? So what are they saying? They, they are not giving glory and honor to the most either. Watch this. Give me that in um, Luke. Luke chapter 4. Read Luke 4 and verse 5. This is the power they get from. This is the power. This is where they get their power from. Because in Deuteronomy 8 verse 17 says, And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this, this, this one. Now read, read that. Luke 4, verse 5. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 4, verse 5. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Meaning in the blinking of, in the, in the blink of an eye. Read on. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. All this what? All this power will I give thee. You see, the same power that we just read in Deuteronomy 8 verse 17. All this power will I give thee. Go ahead. And the glory of them. And the riches of them. Read on. 
for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I will, I give it. It says, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So now it says, I'm going to give this to whoever, whosoever I wish to give to. What is the condition? There's always a stipulation. Have you ever, anybody ever watched that movie, Ghost Rider? Yes, sir. Anybody ever watched that? Uh Uh-huh. Johnny Blaze. When you watch that movie, that's exactly exactly what we're reading here. You understand? Right? If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Because that's the stipulation. All you have to do, I'm going to give you all of this, but the condition is you must worship me and everything that you desire will be yours. You see that thing? Now go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8 now. Verse 17. From chapter 8, verse 17. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 17. Read. And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand have gotten me this wealth. Read. Come on. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. You see what he's saying? He says, the Lord is the one that what? The Lord is the one that gives you power to get wealth. So the strength and power comes from the most High God to do what? That's what the Lord is saying. Read that again. Let's, let's read verse 18 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18. Mm-hmm. But Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So that's what the Lord is saying right here. He says, don't forget the stuff that I've done for you. Don't forget it. Always remember where the stuff that you have will come from. That's what the Mosai is saying, because we tend to forget. We have to leave the familia. We forget the things that the Lord did that for us. Praise to the Most High God that you made it up. Praise to the Lord. Pray, give praise to the Most High that you went up and you came back and nothing happened to you. Because he's the one that is making sure that nothing happens to you. The Most High is doing that. So that's why in Torah he says it is good to praise God and exalt his name. Don't be not slack to praise him. Always give praise and glory and honor to the Father all the time. Why? Because he's the one that everything that you've got, the fact that you, are, you don't go to sleep and you don't wake up, the Lord is the one that's doing it. Okay? The most that God is the one that's doing it. Now watch this. Let's go back to Psalms now. You know what? Hold on. Let's read verse 19. The book of Deuteronomy to take verse 19. Because what we and just read, the, hold on, because what we just read in 17 and 18 is what? In 17, because the one that his, his heart is lifted up because of his pride, he does not acknowledge the most like God, guess what? He says he is the one that's responsible for the wealth he got. Okay? But verse 18, the Lord is saying, no, 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 no. The wealth that you got is because of me. I'm the one that's doing it. Because guess what? There are brothers and sisters in the world that are going to to their job is to help their own people with the wealth they got because the Lord is the one that made that wealth available to them. You understand? Yes, they are worshipping the devil, but nothing happens here without the Lord. The most High is the one that gives the go, the, 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 the go ahead at the end of the day. Okay? Read verse, read verse, uh, verse 19 now. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy today, verse 19. And it shall be If thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. Stop right there. I testify. You see what he's saying? It says, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods. We understand what it means to forget the Lord your God, not keeping his commandments. So if you forget the Lord, you're not keeping his commandments, you're worshiping something else, the devil. You understand? So now it says to walk after other gods to and serve them. So our brothers and sisters in the world, they think it's the Lord that's doing that. That's why a lot of them go to church, but they still be going to consult Sangomas and all that. They be going to um, consult with familiar spirits. 
some will be using snakes and all of that, but by a toile and all that. Yes. Okay. So what we're reading here is what? The minute they 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 they, they, not, they don't acknowledge the most High God and understand that they are Israel, they must keep the commandments, guess what they are doing? They are worshiping other gods. That's why in the two churches is packed in the song the statutes of the Sangomas are long. Okay? Verse 19 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 19. And it shall be, if thou do it all, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them. I testify against you this day, ye shall surely perish. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, ye shall surely perish. Why? Because they, 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 they don't acknowledge the most like God. Because they think they are the ones that's responsible for the things that they've got. Now let's go back. Go back to the book of Psalms now. Let's go back here. Psalm 73. Psalm 73, read verse 9 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 9. Read. They set their mouth against the heavens, mm -hmm. and they turn, walketh through the earth. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 9. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. And their tongue walketh through the earth, jump down to verse 11. And they say, how doth God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? You see what, you see what they are saying? How does God know? What, meaning, what does the Most High know? Meaning, in their minds, God doesn't know anything. He doesn't know what I went through. Where was he when I was doing this? Where was he when I was going through this? Where was he when I was going through that? You see that thing? That's how they think. Okay? Read verse 11 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 11. And they say, how does God know? And is the knowledge in the Most High? Read. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, but behold. Now he's coming back. He says, behold. These are the ungodly who prosper in the world. That's why the Lord says, the lust of the flesh, love not the world, and the things that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Who's running the world? Satan is running this world right now. The white man. Okay, so read that again, verse 12. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly. Who prosper in the world. Come on. They increase in riches. Jump down to verse 15. One thing. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. You see what David is saying? He says, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Why? Because of the things that you, that's why you remember in verse 3 says, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He says, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. You understand? Read on. Watch this. This is how he comforted himself. Verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, uh -huh. then I understood, then understood I their end. You see what the Lord is saying? This is what David is saying in the spirit. He says, until I went into the sanctuary of God. The sanctuary of God is the sight. The sanctuary of the Most High God is this Bible. It says, then understood I their end. Then understood their end. I said, okay, now I understand how their story is going to end. My job is to focus on this. Because watch this. How, when he says, I went into the sanctuary of God and then understood I their end, watch this. Give me the book of Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 18. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 18. Watch this. I believe it's verse 18. Yes, read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 18. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things mm -hmm. and hope for why. Meaning what? Hope for the kingdom. The why is talk about the kingdom. Go ahead. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things. He says, the ones that are doing wickedly, remember what we just read in Psalm 73. The ones that are doing wickedly, he says, they're going to suffer straight things. The same thing is what? They also gonna go, they're also going to go through pain. You understand? Read. For they that have done wickedly 
have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the why. They're not going to get the kingdom. They are not going to get the kingdom. So that's what he's saying. What he's saying right there says, yes, the wicked, they are also going to go through trials and all that because they have to, they, they have to, they have to sell their body. They have to sell their, they, they have to sell their body. You understand? They have to give themselves over to vile affection. You understand? They have to invent evil things and so, and so forth. Their mind is corrupt. Guess what? They're going to get the judgment. Okay? We also going to go through trials. But our trials is to do what? Is to restrain ourselves from our own iniquities. Meaning what? To, uh, to examine and apply and forsake our sin. They, on the other hand, they don't restrain in nothing. They're going to suffer for it after death. Okay? Jump to the verse before it. Read verse 17. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 17. Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bearest rule, that was ordained in thy law, that the righteous should inherit these things, but the ungodly should perish. The ungodly should perish, meaning what? They are going to die. That's what the Lord is saying, if they don't repent. That is what we are reading this. Go back to Psalm 73, verse 17 again. The book of Psalms, 73, verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood, then understood I their end. He went into the scriptures, then he understood the end of the wicked or the or, or the ungodly. But watch this. Now, remember, I, I went over this to show you that our brothers and sisters they prosper in the world, and some people in the truth, some of you brothers in the truth and sisters, you might be enticed by that. Listen, do not be enticed by that foolishness. You must pray to the Lord to give, the, to give us this day our daily bread. For the things, so only what you need, not what you want, what you need. That's supposed to be the prayer because you see the bigger picture. You understand? Now watch this. Um, and go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8. There's something I want to touch on. Deuteronomy chapter 8, read verse 19. Read 17. Then we're going to read um, 19. You tell me 8 verse 17, then we're going to jump. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, 8 verse 17. And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand have gotten me this wealth. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. No, no. For it is he. I said this, you're going to read 17 and 19. I need you to pay attention. Read verse 19 now. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 19. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. So now he's saying, because they think their, their might is their power, and their might is the reason why they, are, they, they have, they, they let the world love them is because they decided to walk after other gods and to serve them. Now watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 19. Isaiah 8. You know what? Give me Jeremiah 4 first. Jeremiah 4, verse 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sorted children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. You see what the Lord is saying? Is that for my people is foolish, meaning we die. We have forgotten the most high God, we have forgotten his law. He says, they have not known me. They are sortish children, meaning they are stupid, they are dumb. Watch this. Let's, let's deal with the whole thing. Give me that in uh, 1 Samuel, chapter 13, verse 13. 1 Samuel 13, verse 13, it says, for my people is foolish. My people is fool. Who is God's people? You know what? Give me Jeremiah 4 verse 1. First. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 1. If thou wilt return, O Israel, oh, said what? the Lord, O Israel. O Israel. So the subject matter is about the nation of Israel. Now jump down to verse 22 again. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. Mm -hmm. For my people is foolish. For my people they have not is known. foolish. So many the children of Israel, we are foolish, the Lord said. They have not what? 
They have not known me. They have not known the law. Give me that in First John chapter 2. They have not known me. First John chapter 2 and verse, let's start verse 3. First book of John chapter 2 verses 17. No, no. 17. First John 2 verse 3. First book of John chapter 2 verse 3. And hereby we do know, and hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. You see what it means to know the Lord? That's why it says they have not known him. We are not keeping his commandments, he says, as a nation. Okay, go back. Jeremiah 4, verse 22 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sortish children. They are sortish children, meaning they are dumb children. Sortish means stupid. Give me Proverbs 1, verse 22. It says, they have not known me. They are sortish children, okay? Proverbs 1, verse 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, would ye love simplicity? Mm -hmm. And the scorners delight in the scorning, and fools hate knowledge. You see that thing? So the sorted, the, when it says sorted children, that's why it is, because what? He keeps asking us, how long, you simple ones, meaning you sorted ones, will you love simplicity, will you love stupidity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. That's why we're destroyed now. We have what? The mind, the mind is corrupt. Okay, let's go back. Jeremiah 4, verse 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sorted children. And they have none understanding. They have what? They are wise. And they have none understanding. They have none understanding. None. Meaning void of understanding. No understanding whatsoever. Give me that in Psalms 111, verse 10. This is the understanding that the Lord is saying we lack as a nation. Okay, Psalm 111, verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all, have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So he's, he's telling us exactly how to get understanding, to, be, to get the true, proper understanding of this Bible. We must be keeping his command. That's how you receive understanding. Okay, let's go back. Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. Mm -hmm. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sought as children. And they have none understanding. They are not keeping the law. We. Really. They are wise to do evil. They are what? They are wise to do evil. So, but we do, however, have the wisdom to do evil. So that's what the Lord is saying. Why? Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse three. He says, "We have the wisdom to do evil. They are wise to do evil." Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter nine. And verse 3, read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 3. Go ahead. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. And that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Mm -hmm. and, and madness is in their heart. While they live. Right. And after that, they go to the dead. You see what it's saying? It says, um, Yea, also, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. King Solomon can safely say this because when you read Wisdom of Solomon, he says he understood the reasonings of men. That's why he can safely say, The heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And what? And madness is in their heart, meaning in that mind. So already right there, you understand, is letting you know that go back to Jeremiah 4, 
the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. Right. For my people is foolish. Mm -hmm. They have not known me. They are sought as children. And they have none understanding. They have none they are wise. Hold on. They are not, they have none understanding. Come on. They are wise to do evil. They are wise to do evil because the wisdom to do evil, where do we get it from? It comes from the mind that is already filled with evil and madness, like we read in Ecclesiastes 9. Like we re always read in Mark 7, 21, verse 23. All these things come from within and defile the man. So that's what we're reading here. Full of evil and madness is in their heart. Okay? Go back. Um, let me see if I want Jeremiah again. Yeah, keep reading Jeremiah. Read Jeremiah again. That last part. They are what to do evil? They are wise to do evil. They are wise to do evil. Go ahead. But... To do good, they have no knowledge. But to do good, they have no knowledge. Guess what? When it says we are wise to do evil, the wisdom to do evil. Let me show you. I'm going to give you the extent of the wisdom that we have to do evil. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10. Let's read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10. Read there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. That's abortion. Or that uses divination. Witchcraft. Or an observer of times. Witchcraft. They like to tell you, look, we can, we can show you your dead mother. Those are familiar spirits. Okay, go ahead. Or an enchanter. Oh, a witch. Or oh, a what? Oh, a witch. It's all going into the same thing. The zodiac and all of that stuff. Astrology. Okay. Women be caught up with that stuff. Me, I'm Sagittarius. Me, I'm Aquarius. Whatever. What is, is it? Is there Aquarius? What do they call it? Is it? I think it's Aries, sir. Is there, is there no aqua, aqua something? It's just Aries. You know what Aries is? Eric is called the God of War. You know who that is? Inanna. You know who that is? Isis. Isis is called the God of War. Because the Assyrians, when they went to war, guess what? They had the statue of Inanna, the goddess of fertility, the god of the sky. The queen of heaven is the goddess of the sky. Okay? The goddess of war. And of fertility. So, what we're reading here, you understand, it all falls under that. It all fall, falls under witchcraft and idolatry. So an observer of times, an enchanter, and a witch. Okay, read on. Oh, a charmer. Oh, a consulter with familiar spirits. You see that thing? And a consulter of what? what? A consultant with familiar spirits, the spirits that are familiar to you. Go ahead. Oh, a wizard. Oh, a necromancer. A necromancer. Let's see the definition of necromancer because that's not a regular necromancer. One second. Okay, a necromancer is a witch. It says, a person who practices necromancy, a wizard or a magician. A wizard or a magician, okay? They be dealing with uh, alchemy. That, that guy, what's his name? Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton was involved in that stuff. Alchemy. He was involved in that stuff. Magic. Okay. Read verse 11 again. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 11. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 11. Read. Oh, a charmer. Mm -hmm. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Read. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Go ahead, next verse. Come on. For all that do these, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. 
And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. You see that thing? So now it says, all that do these things, consult these images and all of that, they are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, why am I bringing this up? Why am I going over this topic? Watch this. Give me Leviticus 20 verse 6. I'm still dealing with this stuff. Leviticus chapter 20. Remember what the Lord says. says, we are wise to do evil. All these evil things, guess what? You're going to find the nation of Israel over there. When it comes to the laws of God to do good, we have no knowledge, the Lord said. Leviticus 20, verse 6. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them. Mm -hmm. I will even set my face against that soul right? and, will, and will cut him off from among his people. The Lord didn't play. The Lord is still not playing till this day regarding this thing. Witchcraft, voodoo, you understand? Uktuala. The Lord doesn't, listen, he don't play. Because when we left Egypt, Leviticus 18 verse 2 now, he warned us, he okay. gave us a fair war, he gave us a, he gave us a precise warning when we left Egypt. Leviticus 18 verse 2. The book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. I am the I am the Lord your God. Your God. I'm not the God of everyone else. I'm the Lord your God, you children of Israel. Really? After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, will I bring you shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, um, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances, meaning stay away from the evils of Canaan that you've learned when you, when, when, no, the land of Canaan, which is, not the land of Canaan, but the Canaanites, the Egyptians, the Hamites, he says, you better stay away from that stuff. Because when we were slaves in Egypt for 400 years, we were doing that. Okay, go ahead. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. You see that thing? He keeps repeating it over and over. Do not dabble with the stuff of Egypt. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book. Go back to Leviticus 20. Read Leviticus 20. Read the last verse now. Leviticus 20, the last verse. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verses 27. Read. A man also, or a woman, that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. You see that thing? Shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. You see, their blood, meaning there was no sacrifice that you could bring for practicing witchcraft and consulting with familiar spirits. There was no sacrifice for them. That's why Northern Kingdom needed Christ to what? To shed his blood so that they also can be brought, brought into the fold. Because idolatry, witchcraft, all of that was prohibited. You understand? If, and if you did that, there was no atonement for your sins except your blood must be shed. Okay? Now watch this. Um, give me the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19. This is the, the our, this is, when it says they are wise to do evil, this is, these are the things that our people are doing today. Because they are following the magicians of Egypt. And guess what? You know when you go to Jovek, even here in Midland, what I'm starting to see is that when you go to Boulders by the Tixeran, you see these Hamites. They be sitting there with the bones and all of that stuff. Now they don't even hide it anymore. You understand? They have no shame to a point where they don't even hide it. They do it when people are passing by. They be calling people to come and consult. Those are the magicians of Egypt. Okay, Isaiah chapter eight verse nineteen. Read that. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 8, verse 19. Read. 
And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Go ahead. Should not a people seek after their God? Should not a people seek after their God? Because guess what? That is the same thing that the Lord commanded us in Leviticus 18. He says, for I am the Lord your God. He is the one that we should seek after. Not seek after the gods of these nations and their customs. You understand? And the ordinances that go along with it, the doctrine that comes with it, the confusion of the mind, the corruption of the spirit that comes along with worshipping and following these things. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. Go ahead. And when, and when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that are familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep Go and ahead. that matter. Mm -hmm. Should not a people seek unto their God? Read. For the living to the dead. Come on. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, if they it is because. Not, if they don't speak according to what is written as it is written. Go ahead. It is because there is no light in them. The spirit of Christ is not in them. The light is the law in Proverbs 6 23. But now watch this. The Lord says we are wise to do evil. The wisdom to do evil, guess what? We know it. And that's why I'm going over this stuff. Because the stuff that we went over is the witchcraft that are people that worship in the world. Because where, where are they learning this stuff from? We read it in the Bible 18. They are learning it from who? They are learning it from the Canaanites. Even the book of Isaiah chapter 2. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 6. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 6. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines. And they, ple and they please themselves in the children of strangers. You see what the Lord, the Lord is saying, we learn this stuff from what? We learn this says they replenish themselves from the east. Okay, and as soothsayers like the Philistines, because where did we learn this stuff from? The Canaanites, the Philistines. Guess what? The Philistines, we know it's the Zulus and the Swati. The majority of them is the Zulus and that's the Philistines. Guess what? When you go to when you go to the Jovex and all of that, it's them that are doing this stuff. It's them. The magicians that are doing this stuff. Now watch this. Give me, let me share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen. I just want to share an example of what we just went through. So this guy says, real snake of Uktuala Nyinyong. Goko Bachini Mbata. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, guys, often uh, we hear videos. Uh, and you see what he has in, on, his, on his neck. He's got a snake on his neck. He's just moving. Uh, just criticizing uh, the, the issue of snakes uh, and everything. Uh, I, I would love to, to bring something to your attention, uh, in terms of Uktwala and Yoga. The other part of it. Kukwana Uktwala Nganyoga, in which I, I can put my head on the block to say that one I do. <laughs> so he says that's why he does it. He says Uktwala Nganyoga, that is special. He specializes in that stuff. That has nothing to do with sex. That has nothing to do with sleeping with a woman. Because I, I cannot be married and have a, a, a daughter and then at the same time and, and give people something that is dangerous for, for, for women. So in this video, here is what I, I'm bringing to you, is that not every Uktwala is dangerous. Coco, you're confusing us. Yes, I, I understand. 
uh, I might be confusing you. The reason I'm saying that is you, you, you go to a traditional healer, each and every traditional healer has their own way of doing things. Meaning each and every witch have their own way of bewitching the people. You know that thing with the of chapter 4, the top, because he's saying each and every traditional healer, you know they like to create these nice terms because they used to call them witch doctors. And then over time, because they, they were integrated into the art and culture and all this garbage, then they say, no, they are traditional healers. No, 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 no. By a lawyer, that simple. This is Solomon chapter 4, verse 12. Let's read. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4, verse 12. Read. For the bewitching of naughtiness that obscure things that are honest. And the wandering of concupiscence that understand, that undermine the simple mind. So now the simple-minded ones, they are going to be what? They are going to be deceived. Why? Because of what? They are bewitched by sin. That was the bewitching of naughtiness. The deceit of sin. That obscure things that are honest. The things that are honest is the law of God. God's laws is pure. They are honest. They are perfect. What we are watching, this is not perfect. This is evil stuff. Okay? They have their own system of doing things. Yeah, they are, they are, what he's really saying is they have their own system of bewitching. Every witch has a technique. Just watch Harry Potter. Okay? So my system that I have decided to, to, to go with is a safe system. Meaning, Uguti, the snake I'm talking about now, it's a snake that is safe. He says the snake, so the snake is talking about this. This snake that he's talking about is the snake that is safe because he specializes in, in using snakes. Okay? My, 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 my son, he's not afraid of snakes. Through me, because... I, if he said, huh, Baba, it's fine. Hold on, wait a minute. You can't make this stuff up. He says, his son comes to him and says, Baba, I'm telling you, you know, you know, you know, you know, who does that? That's why the Lord is saying, stay away from these black, ashy, um, hemites. Stay away from them. Okay? I take it. He can come in Makosini and, and propose and I'll give him snake. He'll go with it. I won't even be there. Hold on. Listen, he says he, he will come in Makosini, he'll propose in Makosini, and then he'll come and collect it. Give me, could you give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7? Okay? Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Let's see, because when you die, let's see where the spirit goes. Okay? Because they make it seem like they can communicate with because that's what the Egyptians believe. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You see that thing? The spirit returns unto the most that God who gave it. Now watch this. Let's go to Job. Okay? Let's go to the book of Job. Job chapter 3, verse 13. The book of Job, chapter 3, verse 18. No, verse 13, one, three. Job chapter 3, verse 13. The book of Job, chapter 3, verse 13. For now, should I have, for now, should I have lain still and be quiet? I should have slept. Then had I been addressed. You see that thing? I should have slept. Then had I been at rest, meaning what? Death. So guess what? When you die, your spirit goes up to the Father and then you are at rest. You understand? That's the same thing that Habakkuk said. Give me that in Habakkuk 3. That I want to rest on that day. Habakkuk 3, verse 16. The book of Habakkuk, chapter, two, chapter 3, verse 16. When I heard my belly tremble, 
My lips quivered at the voice. Come on. Rottenness entered into my bones. We. Oui. And I trembled in myself. Uh-huh. That I might have rest in the day of trouble. That I might have rest in the day of trouble. Meaning I want to be dead on that day. So when you die, your spirit goes to the Father. You are at rest. You don't hear nothing. You can't eat. You can't smell. You can't hear nothing. You understand? You are at rest. I know it's safe. It's not like somebody coming to say, hey, you haven't ever done any of that. In my neighborhood, in my neighborhood, in Mazimene, where I am based, they know Ubuti Uko Oko, but in Mbata, in Yogazake, they are safe. Mm, mm, mm. Why they are safe? Because they are not after killing human beings. Mm. Simple. But, these snakes, if you challenge them, whatever and everything, they will show you flames. So this one that I'm holding here, Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did you see the name here. of the snake? It said the name of the snake, Mangwan. Mangwan, yeah, Mangwan. Where did we read about that? When we were going over the the apartheid secret chapter one, Unguan, remember that? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, one of the families, the one of the many families of the Swati that could have enslaved. Okay. Whatever and everything, they will show you flames. So this one that I'm holding here, Umanguane. Hmm. This one, uh, it's a she. She is responsible to make sure that whatever you want to see happening in your life, it does happen. Likewise. In so, life. Mangwan, Mangwan is the one that brings luck. Mangwan is the one that brings luck, brings luck to your house. If you, whatever you desire, Mangwan will give it to you. That's what it's saying. We just go through reading in Deuteronomy chapter 8 that everything that you receive is what the Lord allows you to receive. You understand? So, in their mind, they control, in their mind, they control this stuff. I want to show you an example. Because they remember what the Lord says. The Lord says he's going to make Egypt a, a basis of the kingdoms. He's going to make Egypt a base nation. Let me show you what was going on in Egypt when the Lord was, was, was giving Egypt a thank you. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Okay. Exodus chapter 7. Um, Exodus chapter 7. Let's start with the... 15. No, no, Exodus 7, verse 8. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 8. No, no, 7, 7, verse 8. Exodus 7, verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 8. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, say, Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. He says, Take the rod and cast it before Pharaoh, the rod will become a serpent, meaning a snake. Go ahead. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh mm-hmm. and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Go ahead. Remember now, this is the first time that the Lord is showing his power. You understand? Guess what he was using? The rod turned into a snake. So you can imagine that the first place, everyone is amazed. What the hell? The rod, the stick turns into a snake. So the first miracle is the one that is more prevalent in the mind. The others, yes, they come, but the first one is the one that you like, whoa, that thing turned into a snake. The subject is to look at the snakes now. 
You see, this is all spiritual. Don't get it twisted. This is all spiritual. Read. Watch this. Then Pharaoh also called he called the wise men and the sorcerers. Mm -hmm. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did like manner with their enchantments. You see what they did is that they also tend to speak into a snake. But you see that part right there, it says, um, it says, um, and Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantment, meaning with their witchcraft. So that's why he's saying every witch has their own recipe on how they lawyer other people. You understand? How they practice their witchcraft. So now, guess what? The sorcerers back then, the magicians of Egypt back then, they were what? They also, that means they also, they were dealing with snakes. That's why they were able to do this. It's letting you know there was, there was spiritual power back then. Demo, there was demonic, demonic activity back then. Guess what? Today, there's also demonic activity. Don't think these things are not real. These things are real. There is demonic activity today. You understand? And I'm going to prove what I'm saying. What we are seeing here, there was demonic activity back then. Today, there's still demonic activity. You understand? Some of them is real. The rest is hocus pocus. But some of the stuff is real. Now watch this. Um, the magicians of Egypt, they replicated the stuff. I, wanna, I just wanted to touch on this so you can see that the reason why you see everybody now is just obsessed with the snake, umamlambo, and all of that stuff. No, it's not a new thing. It's been here before. It has happened before in the past when we were, being, when we were about to be, to be delivered out of the land of Egypt. So it is today. We're in spiritual Egypt. The Lord is going to deliver us all the stuff back then, they are back today. The same people back then, they are back today. Now they just have the power of media that the white man has created to push their witchcraft out. Okay? Whatever you want to see happening in your life, it does happen. Mm. Likewise, there's no sex involved. There's no killing involved, but there's a punishing reward for those who are doing uh, the wrong thing. Meaning what? It says, there, it says there's a punishment for those who are doing the wrong thing. Listen, we used to we made long, long, long time ago. Okay? When we would be going to these, uh, to, to these magicians, and then when we get there, they give you new tea and all of that stuff, and it doesn't work yet. And then you go back. You say, but this stuff is not working. They say, no, you're not applying it correctly. You're not applying it correctly. You see, you must mix it like this. You must do it at this time. You must do it at... Listen, all of these things, all of these things that this, this, this guy is saying, guess what? When he says um, there's punishment, meaning what? The punishment comes in when you no longer want to deal with this stuff. Or you don't do it exactly the way that you are supposed to do it as they instructed you. There will be consequences. Things will just go bad in your life. I remember many years ago, okay, I went to consult a magician. Okay. The same day when I came back from the consultation, I got wrong on that day. You can't make this stuff up. I got raw. My laptop was taken from me. Everything was taken. They even took my meat. I had a meat in my... I had bought meat. I had bought steak from pick and pay or something. They took me too. Mm. Okay? Because that's not our thing. Those things don't... We don't vibrate in that frequency. Okay? Oh, praise to the most I Thank God for that thing. Now watch this. I will praise to the most I um let's here's another one let me show you now now you see this guy you see how calm he is let me show you let me show you now this is him let me show you the negro now i want to show you how the negro moves when he gets involved in this stuff watch this you see this is net bank this is at the net bank atm now look at this is the negro now you see the negroes we like to go over ball that's the negro watch this 
Hey, hey, hey. Ah, you got me to do stuff, Papa. Look what the Negro is doing at the ATM. Okay. Who does that? Okay. That's the Negro. This is, this, this is what Negroes do. You see that this is the Negro right here. Are you seeing this, brothers and sisters? This is the Negro. Backed out. <laughs> this is the Negro. If you have the Negro move, this is the Negro. Okay? It's right. You can right. spot the Negro from a mile away. This is the Negro right here. Okay? And guess what? You cannot tell him in what I'll say to love. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is afraid of the everyone is afraid of the, the guy because he's got a python on his neck just moving about at the at the on his neck while he's drawing money from the from the um net bank ATM. Everybody's just up. But I like the fact that I like the the brother or the sister that took the video. They they make sure that we see or oh, no no, this is the net bank. So let's look at the next one. Here's another Negro. This is the old Negro, though. This is the old Negro. Watch this. Oh. Now, that's the, that's, that's the biggest pipe on here. Look at that, Anana. It's like an anaconda, this one. He's going to the car, and they say, he says, man with giant python performs ritual at court. He went to the courthouse to perform a ritual. <laughs> you hear the brother the better. <laughs> the brother say, yeah, I better what I call him. You see, look what he's doing. Look at what a little bit. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why in the intro, I did you. Ganya, bum, you get it. Ah, I just see local one also, Mamma. You are in a man. Oh, Fabia, I'm going to the reality. But so he's he's traveling with this with this anaconda while he's driving. Oh, no, I shouldn't do Yeah, you can make this stuff up. Look at that. That's the Negro. That's the older Negro. You see, two generations. Okay, that's it on that. I just wanted to show you that, listen, when Israel goes overboard, Israel goes overboard. But the owners of these things, guess what? They are very calm, cool, and collected. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Numbers. Okay, give me the book of Numbers. Chapter 23, Numbers 23, 23. The book of Numbers, chapter 23, verses 23. Go ahead. Surely, there is no enchantment against Jacob. There's no, there's no witchcraft against Jacob. Go ahead. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Because we cannot be bewitched. Right? According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrote? Because guess what? The most that God has is, is, is gave us the blessing that we cannot be bewitched. 
The only time when we are bewitched is when we go against the laws of God. When we go outside of God's commandments, we are vulnerable to attack. You understand? Then these witchcraft things, yes, they can work on us. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 19. Acts 19, verse 19. Read that. Because there were some people that were performing witchcraft. They had books. Witchcraft books. But watch this. Before, oh, wait, wait. Before you get that, give me Acts 8, verse 9. Acts chapter 8. Let's start there first. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 8, verse 9. Mm -hmm. But there was a certain man called Simon. Called Simon, really? Which, which before time in the same city used sorcery. So this man called Simon, he used sorcery. He was a witch. He was, he was an Israelite. Go ahead. And bewitch the people of Samaria. And bewitch the people of what? And bewitch the people of Samaria. He be, we are bewitching the people of Samaria. Who is the people of Samaria? Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 7. Okay. He, be, we were said he was bewitching the people of Samaria. Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 9. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 9. Read and the head of Ephraim is Samaria. So that's northern kingdom. He was bewitching the people of Samaria. He was bewitching the northern kingdom tribes. Go ahead. And the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. That's Pekka. If you will not believe, surely he shall not be established. Now watch this. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter 4. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 17. The book of Hosea, chapter 4. Verse 17. Go ahead. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Ephraim was joined to idols. He says, leave him alone. Stay away from Ephraim. Why? Because they, are what? they went into idolatry and witchcraft. So now, Gandaria, Bruharia, in the, in the Dominican Republic and all that, Mexico. Watch this. Go back to Acts now, chapter 8, verse 9. So what we read in number 23, 23, there is no enchantment or divination against us when we keep the commandments. But Simon, this man Simon, was bewitching the people of Samaria, was using sorcery and divination. Why? Because Ephraim went into idolatry and witchcraft. That's why Simon was able to do this. Okay? Acts chapter 8, verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 8, verse 9. Mm -hmm. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city, used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. Go ahead. Giving, giving out that himself was some great one. He was telling the people that he was some great one. We have the same thing today. The people, that, the, the, the guy that we just watched now on YouTube. Go ahead. To whom they all gave heed. They were listening to this guy. Go ahead. From the least to the greatest saying, this man is the great power of God. He says, this man is the great power of God. Go ahead. And to him, they had regard, because that of long time, he had bewitched them with sorceries. He had bewitched them with sorceries. He was bewitching the people. You understand? Now, watch, watch what, when the apostles got together, when the apostles got together to go and teach the people to raise the dead, to heal the sick and so forth, this is what they did. Give me Acts chapter 19, verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 19, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together. Meaning their books about witchcraft. Because when the apostles came to teach this, what this book, this is when Paul came to Ephesus. You understand? When Paul was at Ephesus and with the disciples that he was, he was, he was, he was uh, teaching with, Guess what? It is many of them which believe, it, which use curious us, brought their book, their witchcraft book. Go ahead. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. No, they studied out of them. And burned them before all men. No, they were using them. And burned them before all men. They burned them before all men. Meaning everybody was witness this thing. When they, were, when they brought their books of witchcraft to burn them. Go ahead. And they counted the price of them and found it. 
50,000 pieces of silver. So what I want to show you here is that what they did is that they brought their books when they were used that they used to practice witchcraft and they burned those books. You understand? So what, what am I showing you here? I'm showing you that our brothers and sisters during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, that is what they were doing. Practicing witchcraft. So guess what? So it is today. Because whenever the people were able to be bewitched, it was because of what? It was because of sin. That's why today you see in the news, celebrities and all of that, they are involved in this snake business and all of that. Who was using the snakes in Egypt? Who? The magicians was doing it. You understand? So today, the same magicians, they are back today. The same one, through regeneration. Because the people that get regenerated, is not just us. The other nations as well, they get regenerated. They get regenerated, they come back. That's what I'm trying to show you. Okay? Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 12. Go ahead. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. You see what King Solomon is saying? He says, be admonished in the world of making many books, there is no end. That's why in the book of Acts, they ban those books. And much study is a weariness of the flesh, is a waste of time, he's saying. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So the book that you're supposed to be reading is the word of the Most High God, because out of it you're going to learn instruction and wisdom and order. You understand? That's why it says, fear God, the conclusion of the whole matter. Get rid of them books. Because let me tell you what the, the whole purpose of, act of, the, of life is. is to fear God and keep his commandments because that's the whole duty of men on earth. Read on. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Go ahead. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Because that's when the Lord, that's the final judgment. That's what he's talking about. You understand? So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to end the class right here. Okay, I'm gonna end the class right here. Let's break bread. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, for laying His life down for us. Let's read that. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He break it and said, "Take, eat. This is my body." which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup for the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.